Hi, it's Philip from CodeCovernet.com. It's been quite a while since my last video, but unfortunately I don't find the time at the moment to record much. So this is only a very quick tip for Access Beginners. It's actually pretty basic, but it's asked over and over again on the internet. So I thought I'd make a quick video about it. It's about how to record the user that enters a record in Access and how to record the user that makes a change to a record. So um, very basic, but I think there are a lot of people out there who want to know that. Okay, let's get started right away. So here we are. I prepared a absolutely simple demo database for this. It has only one table and there's an ID column, a dummy data column that is um, what you would normally have in your table. Really interesting for us today are these four fields. Um, insert user is just a short text with uh, nothing special about it for the username obviously. The insert date is of date daytime and then there's the last update user, short text again, for the username who um, modified the record. And the last update date to record the date time of the last modification. Pretty simple. Now, here's a simple data entry form. Here's just uh, two fields for the data, that is the, the real data in your application. We are going to ignore this today. And this is what we're looking at for fields to record the user data and the date um, of records changes and, and record inserts. So you see the four fields I showed you in the table. They are absolutely basic fields. I bound them directly to the table. The, the whole form is bound directly to the table and those um, text boxes here are bound directly to the table fields. You see here the control source is insert user. I named this field txt for text box insert user. I always recommend use different names for your controls as the database, the data table fields behind them. That way it's much easier to see which one is which and you might be able to avoid a couple of errors by uh, separating those. So, and um, obviously you should always use some um, meaningful name for your controls. The default that Access uh, provides is like text 1 and text 375. That's total nonsense. Whenever you use a control in code, whenever you work with it, just take the two seconds for entering a meaningful name for it. I think that is really, really important. So the other fields are the same. Um, I think I don't need to say much about them. Back to the insert user. It's pretty easy to record the insert user, or, or rather it would be pretty easy. I switch to the data tab in here, and um, one way to get the current Windows username is the environ function. And I would just call it this way. Um, and that should retrieve the username system variable from Windows. The environ function just retrieves um, environmental variables from the operating system and there is a variable named username. That is a bit of a security weakness because Access cannot know what that variable is so it will retrieve an unknown value from the operating system and that might be um, anything. You can't know that in advance. And for that reason, this very simple approach I use here does not work because the environ function is blocked as an expression directly in Access. However, I still can use this function. I need 
just a shallow wrapper in VBA, VBA around this function. So that means I write my own Visual Basic function that just calls the environ system function to get the username. To do that, I switch to database tools, Visual Basic. Now I'm in the Visual Basic editor here. I hit this button to insert a module. And now I just write a function, a public function that is important. I name it get user name. And it is a string data type. And now I just assign the return value, our expression from uh, from a minute ago. It's just environ get username. Now I save this. And yes, I want to enter a name. Does not really matter too much what name you enter. I go for mod user just in case I want to add some other user related functions in there later. So I hit OK and save it. Now that is the module mod user that contains the function. There's just one thing you should not do. You should not use the name of a function as module name. If both are named the same, you will get um, an error because Access does not know which is which when you call the function. So now I can just easily put this in the immediate pane down here. And this is actually my Windows username. So it basically works. What we do now, we use this function as the default value for our control. And now for the insert date, that is even easier. I can enter the now function. Depends, if you only want the date, then you can enter the date function in here. But um, I would prefer to record date and time and that can be achieved by the now function. I just enter that in here, save the form and switch to normal form view. And this is an old record. It does not work here because that was inserted before. I go to a new record and you see instantly, this is my username, it's in here. This is the current date, it's in there. Now I enter some dummy data and store the record. I close the form and just to make sure the data ended up in here. Let's see. The username and the current date are stored in the table. So the first step is completed already. We record the insert date and insert user of new records. Now for the update user, that is a tiny bit more complicated because um, the default value that we used here for new records, that is obviously not going to work for the last update user and the last update date because that w is going to change all the time. So I cannot use a default value that would only be inserted the very first time you enter a new record, but not um, for subsequent edits of the same record. But it's fairly easy to achieve that as well. We need just a tiny bit of VBA code. I, I just mark the form up here and go to the event um, tab on the property sheet. And I select the select the before update event. And I hit that button and say I want to use the code builder. Now I've got a event procedure right here behind the form in the VBA editor. And it's pretty easy what I do here. Um, it's inside the form. So I can use the me keyword to reference the current object I'm in and that is the form and I can reference my controls. And here's the last update user and I want to modify its value. And I can just call my my function get username and I set that to the control value and the same for the last update date. 
I use the now function as I did before with the default values. And the before update event, this event procedure that is always called before a record in that form is updated. So let's try this out. Now this is the new record that, that was already in the database before I did anything. Now I enter something here and now I click on the uh, record selector here to end the edit process and in that instance the before update event was fired and here is the data that was created or inserted by the tiny VBA procedure I just added to the form. So very, very basic. And the same happens with this record. If I um, enter some more data in here, so I'm changing the record and hit the um, record selector to save it. Now you see the username of the last update user and the last update date is stored. But that is only, as the name says, the last update user. It's not a real history, it's only the last edit. Now look, it's um, this is the time 42 seconds at the end. Now I change the record again and you see this has changed and it's the, the date of the last um, edit, but the previous edit date and the previous edit user, they are overwritten. So you do not know um, who edited the record before. If you want to achieve that, you would create a history table where each edit needs to be locked. But that is a more complex topic and I'm not going to cover it today. So here we are. So that's it already for today. If you like the video, please uh, down there is the th thumbs up. Click it, please. If you want to see more of my videos, subscribe to the channel. And um, well, I honestly hope it will not be that long a time until I be able to record the next video. Until then, bye bye.